So hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Brian Lin, and I'm going to give a quick overview of HD Condor CE5. Uh, and then I will hand it off to TJ, who will go into depth of the headlining feature of Condor CE5, uh, a new job router configuration syntax called job router transforms. Next slide, please. Uh, so HD Condor CE, uh, CE stands for Compute Entry Point, um, and I won't go into all of the details here, um, but it is a special configuration of HD Condor, C, or HD Condor um, and there was an, an overview talk in the Autumn HD Condor workshop that you should check out or watch the YouTube video on our channel. Next slide, please. But to give everybody some context, uh, HD Condor CE is uh, or can be a critical service in a distributed high throughput computing environment. Um, and it is one of the many services that, that can be can be run or that, that should be run. Um, and so on, on the left hand side, you may have a user community that has a uh, login access to uh, an HD Condor access point. Uh, and then you have uh, some infrastructure that is, is, is run by, uh, say, the, the OSG uh, call, that we call a resource allocation request factory. So for those of you that have been in the business for a long time, uh, you may be more familiar with the terms pilot job or gliding job. Uh, and then on the right, uh, your the resources uh, may be made available through many different sites who have their own local batch systems. Uh, and then the, the compute entry point uh, is what is used to translate things uh, to that local batch system. Next slide, please. So in this model, uh, the users in your communities submit their work to the, the Condor SCEDI, their access point. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, and then on behalf of those users, the factory will submit resource allocation requests to the CE. And this will be uh, basically the size of the resources that, they, uh, that the community needs to support uh, all of the work that has been submitted to the access point. And the CE will then take uh, those uh, allocation requests and then submit them to the local batch system, um, taking into account any sort of local policies, a, uh, specific partitions or accounting groups that these jobs uh, or these allocation requests should go into. Uh, and then uh, the local batch system will, will start running these jobs on their worker nodes. And the, the neat thing about the allocation requests is that they will start up uh, some, some Condor start deeds. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then these start Ds report back to the uh, Condor or the, the community's central manager uh, and then are made available to the access point where all the usual matchmaking is involved. Uh, and then the jobs start running under these start Ds. So uh, this is a way to, to basically make a, a virtual Condor pool uh, across all sorts of potentially geographically distributed resources. Next slide, please. So Condor CE5 is the, the new major version available alongside Condor 9.0 and the, and the 9.1 series. Uh, the 9.1 series is, is the development series for the, the HD Condor team. Um, and potentially at some point, we may release a Condor CE6 uh, that ha also has some major changes that would go alongside that, that series. In Condor CE5, we added support for the improved job router configuration syntax. The, the old syntax is still supported, um, but we hope that you, you guys will try out the, the new job router transforms. Uh, the Condor map file uh, formatting has changed and the, and the location has changed. Um, so for you CE administrators, uh, it's important to look out for, for this uh, during your updates. Uh, this next bullet is hopefully going to be transparent to all of you. We moved to Python 3, and alongside it, we added support for enterprise Linux 8-based operating systems. 
Uh, and then one other change um, that, that may require um, some um, manual configuration updates on your end if, if you need this feature, but we do, know, we do not set the home environment variable uh, in the allocation request or the pilot jobs environment by default anymore. We do have detailed upgrade instructions and release notes. Uh, and this is, they're all available in a redesigned documentation area for uh, Condor CE. Oh, uh, that should be uh, hecondor-ce.org. Um, or you can go directly to this uh, GitHub pages link that will um, bring you to the release notes and the upgrade instructions. Next slide, please. So going into a little bit of detail about the new mapping configuration, uh, CE administrators uh, should now place their own um, incoming allocation request credentials to local user mappings in a dedicated directory at CE Condor CE map files.d. This works very much like uh, config D directories that I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Uh, when doing this update, uh, your configuration changes to the Condor map file will be moved to Condor map file.rpm save. Uh, and any of these customization should then be moved into the, the mapfiles.d folder. Uh, we did the split uh, because we also included a um, condor ce mapfiles.d in, in user share. Uh, and this is um, owned by potentially, or this is for files owned potentially by downstream packagers. So for example, in the OSG, we provide default side tokens mappings for the, the OSG and Glow VOs. Uh, and then there are also some default mappings that are required there for functioning of, of the Condor CE. Uh, we also changed the, the syntax in these map files. The credential matching strings should be converted to regular expressions. So in the old syntax, uh, a mapping based on the side token issuer has three fields. Uh, the first field um, is the Condor authentication method to be used. The second field is um, what Condor maps the, or what Condor uh, sees from the credential. In this case, it's the token issuer. And then the third field is the local user that the issuer or the token is mapped to. So in the new syntax, that second field should be converted to a regular expression. Uh, and you'll notice that actually uh, for the tokens, there, there kind of is a, a comma um, before that, that last splash. Um, and that's because uh, when tokens come in, Condor can see both the token issuer uh, and the token subject. So in that last bullet, um, we are mapping all tokens from that same OSG connect side tokens issuer, uh, but only if they have the testing token subject. Uh, next slide. And I think this is where we hand off to TJ, who will uh, sell you on how great the new job router transform syntax is. Um, all right. So we're going to talk about the, the new configuration for, uh, for the job router. And of course, the CE is, uh, is essentially a special uh, uh, predefined configuration uh, for the job router along with a bunch of other uh, scripts and uh, config. Um, so the reason we changed the job router config was essentially that we had two different transform languages in Condor. That was the one used by the SCED submit transforms and the one used by the job router. And the SCED submit transform language is just more powerful. And so we ported that into the job router. Um, and while we were doing that, we, uh, we also improved the way the configuration for the job router works in, in other ways as well. Um, now we're still backward compatible. If you have an old style job router config, it will work the same way it did before. Um, you can also, um, use the new configuration for individual routes. So you can deploy improved uh, configuration one route at a time if you wish. Uh, if you have routes in the old config and the new config with a name conflict, then we'll just ignore the one in the old config. 
So a uh, quick review of what the old config looks like. There are basically two knobs. There's job runner defaults, which for the CE is where most of the CE boilerplate lives. Um, uh, that is uh, stuff that is common to all routes. Then job router entries is a list of class edge, each one of which is a route. Um, and the way this actually works is we load job router entries, we split it into individual class ads, we merge each of those class ads with the entirety of job router defaults, and that becomes your effective route ad. Um, the new config splits these things up, so it's much better to, or much easier to compose um, your transforms um, it, using a bunch of individual configuration uh, steps. Um, there's still one config, uh, there, I'm sorry, there is a now a separate config knob for each route. Um, and the job of the job router defaults is now taken up by two lists. There's a list of pre-route transforms and a list of post-route transforms that are applied whenever we uh, apply a route. Uh, the new config knobs, we have a, a list of names. This is just the names of the routes. And that tells us which job router route uh, at, uh, knobs to load. Each of those will have a single route in it. Um, and then we have two lists for the pre and post route transforms. And those will be referring to the knobs job router transform name. Um, So now a route is a sequence. Uh, and the way this works is when we decide to route a job, um, we walk through the list of route names one at a time, comparing the job to the requirements expression on the route. Uh, and the first time we find a match and that route has not yet hit its limit for the number of jobs that it can accept, um, then we do the transforms. Um, we start by creating a variable set uh, for temporary variables. Then we apply all the pre-route transforms. Then we apply the route transform. Then we apply all the post-route transforms. Um, and then we take that uh, modified job class add and we send it to the destination schedule. And then we clear the temporary variable set. So the implication here is you can share variables between transforms. You can set a variable in one of the pre-route transforms and then use it in the route or uh, consequently, or, or you can set a, a variable in the route and pick it up in a post-route transform and do something useful with it. Um, and this is essentially how we handle a lot of the defaulting behavior. Um, the transform language, um, consists of uh, uh, commands, essentially. Um, the commands are, by convention at least, are all uppercase and uh, precede the lines that, uh, that define the, the transform steps. Um, there are six commands that modify the job, set, and a val set you may be familiar with from the old transform language. They work essentially the same. Uh, default is like set except it does nothing if the job already has a value for that attribute. Um, and then rename, copy, and delete uh, are used to, uh, to rename attributes and copy attributes and delete them in the job. Um, they have the nice improvement that they can be uh, regex based. So you can say, rename every attribute that ends in test to a new attribute that ends in test two or whatever. Um, there are also commands that configure the route. These are looked at when the route is loaded. Um, requirements and universe, the one you'll, uh, you'll want to use. Uh, the name you probably don't want to, it's there for completeness, but the name of the route is typically um, the name of the knob. Uh, and you don't really want to give it a different name in the route unless, uh, unless you set that to the same value or things get a little confusing. Um, then there's also a special command to do uh, evaluation, but to set the result into a temp variable rather than booting the job ad with that value. 
uh, routes are, uh, the syntax of the routes are similar to the syntax of submit. As a matter of fact, it uses the same bit of code that loads submit files, but with some specialization uh, for handling the lines that don't look like uh, uh, variable equals value. Um, because it uses that same parser, we can use the same uh, kinds of things that we can do uh, in submit files. We can use if, else, and indif. There are some um, uh, built-in uh, values that it understands. Um, and you can do um, dollar substitution. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, there are some special variables uh, that control um, uh, that are sort of metadata for the route. Uh, target universe is an alternative way of formulating universe. This is basically there for backward compatibility with the old style route syntax. Um, any uh, grid universe routes will need to have a grid resource. Um, and then the rest of these things are uh, pulled into the sort of route metadata when the route is loaded and, and used to control the routing itself. Uh, so here's an example of a route in the new syntax. Um, the name of this route is going to be area 41 because that's the tag at the end of the knob name. Um, we're going to say that uh, we only want to route jobs that have project blue book already assigned in the job ad. We're going to route them to a, a, a slurm batch system. The, uh, uh, this particular batch system has a max idle. We're going to set it to change it to 20. There's a default, I believe, of 100. Uh, and then we're going to set a couple of attributes into the job ad. Um, and one of the things we've done here is we picked up a knob from the, the regular condor config, my router ID, uh, and used it as the value uh, to set into the job. So we're, we're doing dollar substitution like we could in the submit file, but we're doing that in the route at, at the time the route is applied. Um, here's an example of pre-route transform. Um, once again, we have a requirement. So this transform is only going to apply if, uh, if the job doesn't have an attribute called project. Um, and we're going to use uh, eval set so that the project is set to the string that is the result of evaluating these bits of information, including two uh, job attributes, owner and queue date. Um, this, by the way, could also have been written in this other form where we eval macro into a temp variable, and then we use default to set the project. Uh, and as I remember, as I said before, um, the default uh, command will not change the value of project for a job. It will only set a value if the job doesn't currently have one. All right, so the real power in this new transform language is, uh, is two things, actually. Um, and I, I didn't really mention one before, but uh, just to be clear, let's go back and look at this again. Um, when we apply the route, the steps of the route are just applied in the order that they are declared. Um, this is distinct from the old transform language where the route steps were applied in uh, groups by the type of operation, but randomly ordered otherwise. So the um, because we're doing this in sequence now, uh, we can guarantee, for instance, that the eval macro step in this bottom thing happens before the assignment to the project. Um, so the other bit of power is this dollar substitution, which we can do to pick up values from the config, from the route or, or previous uh, pre-route transform steps, um, or from the job. Um, so let's go into a little bit more detail so you can see kind of how this dollar substitution works because it, mastering and understanding the nuances of dollar substitution uh, is going to be necessary to use this, uh, this more powerful route language correctly. Um, so let's say you want to modify the requirements of the job. Um, we can have a route that does set requirements equals, so dollar my requirements, that will expand to the current uh, value 
uh, of the jobs requirements attribute. Um, and then we're gonna tack on another clause after that. And it will be picking up a variable, the variable site from the, the configuration of the job router itself. So when a job um, being routed has requirements equals arch x of two four, when once we apply the dollar substitution pass, um, that will then look like requirements equals arch equals x of two four, and then site that will then get parsed uh, by the class add parser and turned into an assignment statement. Um, this, by the way, is something. Uh, this amending of requirements is something you just can't do in the old job transform uh, syntax. Uh, here's a much more complicated example um, that involves modifying the jobs environment block. Um, once again, we're going to pick up job attributes, the, the current value of environment, um, and also um, the value of the job attribute y. Um, and we're using a special uh, dollar expansion um, command sort of thing, uh, dollar int, uh, if you can see that uh, in that uh, uh, line up at the top. Um, what that actually does is evaluate the expression and then substitute the result of that evaluation. That sort of thing works in config files and submit files and now in your job transforms as well. Um, so I've used color here to try to help you see where the various bits are coming from. Uh, I hope that's clear, although the colors aren't as distinct on my screen as I thought they would be. Um, this uh, uh, new job transform language um, can be hard to, uh, to understand, especially with the dollar substitution. Um, and so we have tools that you can use to test things. The, job router info tool or the Condor CE job router info tool if you're using CE um, can be invoked to uh, print out all of your routes to show you what the configuration looks like or you can actually uh, invoke it as a as a testing tool where you pass in a job class add as a file and get out um, the transformed job class add as a file. Um, you can also use the specialized sort of standalone tool, Condor Transform Ads. Um, you can't use it with a job router config, but if you pull um, those individual transforms out into separate files, um, uh, you can pass those files to the Condor Transform Ads with the dash rules argument. Um, and uh, the verbose uh, argument to transform ads will then print out the steps of the transform as they are applied so you can see what's really going on. All right, that's my talk. Any questions? <laughs>